diplomatic relations with uh, Iraq, not Iran. And uh, it included contacts, including uh, Don Rumsfeld going over as uh, a presidential envoy and meeting with uh, Saddam. You, I mean, so you're correct about that. The argument that the United States provided, I mean, I've heard this many times, that the United States provided the chemical weapons that uh, Saddam Hussein used, that's not correct, as far as I know. Uh, there, and that's just, it's, there's an enormous amount that gets circulated, and we've heard a lot of it here uh, just in the last few minutes. There's an no enormous amount that gets circulated about this subject. It's a very controversial subject. Enormous amount that's just not true, but it gets widely circulated and widely repeated. And there's a common assumption that if something gets repeated enough, that the repetitions somehow validate the original false statement rather than simply echo it. And, uh, and, and and well, I, uh, the technique that I, the technique that I use is to present information that you can check in a record, and I don't cite I don't cite anonymous sources, and uh, I pr I provide the evidence for my propositions in the book, and as I said, I've even made it easy for people to access it on the website. I think that the general skepticism that's expressed here is a good thing. I read everything skeptically. You should read everything skeptically. And I'm perfectly happy to have you take everything that I say skeptically. I would suggest you check, do a scholarly check of the material and see, uh, and see what conclusions you come to. And it's also worth pointing out that even when people do serious scholarly work, uh, they often come to opposing conclusions. And I mean, that's the whole reason our country is set up as a democracy, is that reasonable people can differ about public policy matters. I want to thank you as a student for coming today. I know that uh, your book and your expertise in this area is at the center of a very controversial issue. And a lot of the passionate responses we've heard, I think, come back to accountability, which is what my question is about. Um, my name is Andy Patterson, by the way, a PhD candidate in public affairs here at the University of Colorado at Denver. And um, at one point in your opening remarks, you commented that this decision you were making at that point was not a political one, but well, you didn't say what it was, but I assume that meant an administrative one. Um, and, and sort of echoes the, the philosophy that Woodrow Wilson espoused in the early last century, that there was that dichotomy that not only could but should happen between politics and administration and policy. And in my humble opinion, sir, I think that that dichotomy, that that split is, is impossible. And I was just hoping you could comment on that. It's very hard to make a policy decision that isn't political. Uh, the distinction that I was drawing was between a, uh, a political consideration and a, just a substantive, a, a substantive consideration of what is in the national security interests of the United States, you know, without, without regard to immediate electoral considerations. Um, I can imagine that one could define political broadly enough that you could say that everything that gets done is political. And, I mean, you know, depending on how you define your terms, I, I, I'm not sure I would quarrel with you uh, on that. I was using political in a rather narrow sense of saying near-term electoral political considerations. Lots of people in, in Washington operate on the basis of near-term political considerations where they, they will greatly value the short-term considerations and devalue the longer-term considerations. So some things that are right and important to do but won't appear to be right and important until way down the road and in the meantime are highly controversial and therefore dangerous for, for example, the members of the House of Representatives who support them will be opposed even by people who will tell you, you know, I do understand that that this is an important thing to do, but I'm not going to be able to come back after the next election if I support it. That's the, that's the kind of trade-off between near-term political considerations and, and longer-term national interest considerations that I was referring to. But as I said, I mean, if you're talking philosophically and using a broad definition of the term political, I, you know, I, I could see where, where you would say uh, that everything that gets done in a democracy, in a certain sense, is political. 
That, that just isn't the way I was using the, uh, the word. Sir? I want to know why we can't film here. Why can't you film here? Yeah, I'm asking him. None of us can film. We brought cameras, and you're, like, blocking out the media, but yet you're, 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 you're doing politics in a house of God, okay? And, and that's kind of confusing to me, and, like, you have something to anyway, hide. I think you, you could direct your question to the, to the school. Okay. No cameras, because you didn't want it digitally altered. So what, what, what is your answer, sir? Why can't we film you? The school has its policy on filming. That's not what we were told. Uh, in reference to the current economic crisis, I was wondering what you think about the bill that uh, Congress passed, I believe last week, uh, basically at the same time that they passed the uh, 800 and $50 billion bailout package. I think it was somewhere like $500 billion for the military budget for maybe the next year or something like that. And how you think we can maintain our empire of 700 military bases across 130 countries in the world while we're in such a dire economic crisis here at home? And a slight other question of why do you think uh, terrorism should be the main focus of our policy toward basically our economy, where we can spend as much money on a bailout as we do on our military budget and have all these bases, while terrorism accounts for, you know, 3,000 people died in 9-11, which was a tragic event, but every year some like 3 million people die of heart disease. If we refocused our efforts on health care and uh, diseases and car accidents, stuff like this, rather than focusing on, you know, these relatively minor events of terrorism. Well, I, I don't think you would have found too many Americans on September 12, 2001, describing what had happened the day before as a minor event. Well, I don't think And I think part, of the, reason, part of the reason that you're able to describe it that way, no, I mean, I think this is important. You're asking about national priorities. Yes. And I, I think that the 9-11 attack was a great shock to the American people. And uh, the, there was a, a sense of vulnerability. There was a sense that, that uh, many of our key institutions were at risk. As I said, there was a, a, a strong fear that if there had been a series of such attacks, we might have completely altered the nature of our country. Now, the administration launched an extremely vigorous, comprehensive, worldwide effort to try to use all kinds of different tools, as I said, diplomatic intelligence, law enforcement, and, and military, to prevent the next attack. And one of the consequences, I think, of, of that strategy is that here we are, more than seven years later, without having suffered the follow-on attack that most Americans believe we were going to suffer uh, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. Now, one of it's it's kind of built into our system that when you when the government makes a major effort of that kind and actually averts a gigantic problem, inevitably people come forward and say, "Why did you sweat it at all? If you averted the problem, it couldn't have been that serious a problem." But that's not what I'm saying. And well, but but it, 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 with all due respect, I think it is part of what you were saying. You were saying this is why are we spending resources to deal with this subject of terrorism? when you described it as, I mean, the word minor problem was your term. Rel relatively minor. Well, rel okay, relatively minor. It would not be, in my view, it would not be relatively minor if we had had a number of 9-11. First of all, 9-11 itself was not minor, and it would not have been minor if we had had a series of attacks. And so I, I think the, the short answer is countries will spend what they need to spend to, to do whatever is they, they judge prudent to defend themselves. I mean, it's a fundamental purpose of government. It's a fundamental purpose of government to, to provide security. And uh, now, again, reasonable people differ about the size of the defense budget, and that gets debated by our elected representatives in Congress. But, I mean, in, in, 